What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today we are here in Monroe, North Carolina to check out a shop for a very special shop tour. We're here at Dynatech. This is a job shop doing some production, doing some low run stuff, some high run stuff and everything in between. Let's go take a look. Inconel, titanium, anything you bring it, we'll do it. It, it comes and comes and it, and it goes and it goes. This machine's paying for itself. It's paying for right itself. Now. Got Amazing. 35 years in this place. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It feels like home here to me. I have the exact same shelf. All right, guys, let's go on in. Here at Dynatech, I'm joined by my friend, Ron. Ron, hey. thank you very hey, much yeah. for having us. Thanks. Thanks. Good to have you here. Now, how long have you guys been in business here? This will be our 10th year of business. And what do you guys kind of focus on here at Dynatech? We're primarily a job shop. We pretty much take on onesies, twosies, prototypes, um, short runs, long runs. I'll take whatever comes to the door. And whether that's aluminum or as far as Inconel, I hear. Inconel, titanium, anything. You bring it, we'll do it. I like it. Do you mind if we take a look at sure. this place? Let's go have a look. So our first machines, we've kind of transitioned a little bit. Uh, we started using the Hyundai machines. Uh, this right here is a 2022 huh. Hyundai 56 uh, and a very nice machine. I think the travels are uh, 40 by 25. Now, this is a machine that, I mean, it looks super nice, but I'm not super familiar with it. What kind of made you transition to these machines away from maybe some more well-known North American machines? Well, when we first started, we were using Haas machines. I bought a lot of used equipment, but as the business started growing over the last 10 years, uh, we transitioned and uh, I started looking at something more sustainable, more heavy. Uh, the difference between this machine, let's say hypothetically, a VF2 versus this right here, uh, the VF2, 7,800 pounds. This machine, 14,500 pounds. It's literally double it the is. weight. And why is, why is weight good for those who don't know? It's, it's rigidity, stability at what you're machining. Uh, we hardly get any chatter. And as you see here, this also has a five axis put in here. The spindles are dual contact spindles. They're also chilled. And, chilled, uh, so they're, the they're, coolant goes straight in there? Uh, it's actually a chiller that's on the back of the machine. It actually comes through and it has coolant wrapped around the machine so you can run large uh, large oh. runs and the, you get no thermal expansion. That's actually very interesting. Now, a lot of mold building and stuff like that. You well, yeah, when you're running a long yep. cycle. Now, I see you have a Sam Chully chuck on that. Is that just what came on that rotary? No, we bought that specific for this. I have one of those yeah. as well. I find them very, very high yep. quality. Yep, they were very good and we're very happy with it for doing fourth axis work. And what kind of parts are you running in here today? This is actually, uh, it's actually a, a wire guide and this was a, a lathe operation first. And so we started this right here. I think it's a 4140. We narrowed the outside. It's got a, this is a, an area where a wire we fed through. It's like, I think it actually, it's like two feeding together like that. Kind of like on a wire EDM or yep, something, right? Yep, uh -huh. And the wire comes out and then they actually cut the wire based on this. So these are like oh. wire pinchers right here. And we're, we're, we're putting the mounting holes in there now. Oh, you're putting the, oh, I see. Yep, you're putting yep. the secondary features on yep. there. Yep, so we're gonna put that. We're gonna do the mounting holes, a couple of locating dowels and doing some engraving. Now, when I see this machine here, that is a FANUC controller. Yep. Well, How do they compare to something like a Haas? Uh, I love Haas controllers. I think Haas controllers is one of the best in the business, but I've used Fanuc all my career. I've been in the business for 35 years and um, very comfortable with this. It has a lot of features. They both have features that the other ones don't have. Right. I'll give you an example. This has a, a peck tap feature, uh, a, a tap pecking feature that G83, if you just simply add a Q in there and the Q has a decimal value, let's say hypothetically you're going one inch and you put a 0 0.05, so every 50 thousandths it'll just break the chip and back out and come all it's the way like up. It's like a peck drilling cycle, but for tapping. That is and correct. And that's super useful for hard stuff, stringy stuff, gummy stuff. That's exactly right. So, and the, we found also, we were breaking a lot of taps before when you were trying to go too deep. Uh, by pecking, we, we found we hardly ever break taps. So it's, a, it's really a, a lot more efficient. Very nice feature, yep. And I like your workbenches here. These are very similar to the ones I have in my shop. Yep. Are these kind of a standard setup that you'd have here in a normal day? It is. We, uh, when we first started, of course, you put stuff together as you need it. And every table has to have a workstation, a workbench. And this is kind of how it transitions right here. And how many guys work here right now? Nine. You have nine people working here. Mm -hmm. Full well, shifts? So yeah, well, we just weren't, we were in uh, seven to, 4.30 Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 3.30 on Friday. That's the way to do it. So we get a 44-hour <laughs> work week, you know, so they get a little overtime and everybody likes that. 
So this is the 4600, uh, it's kind of like the 5600, a uh, little smaller capacity, same principle. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, we're doing a production run. There's three vices in here. So basically, we're sticking one part in there and going to three operations. You yep. stick the part in, the part comes out, and the part is uh, basically 100% oh. finished. Yeah, and we're doing all these features during that time. That's not a lathe operation. You're milling that. We're milling it, yeah. Wow. Well, what we did, we roughed it down the lathe first, but this thing has an eccentric in it. So the bore, this bore right here is is like a, an eighth inch off center oh. from the center of the part. Yes, it is. So the, and, and see, when we first made these, we, we did all this operation and we had finished this OD. Well, when you finish this OD, the OD is like seven tenths tolerance and it made it go out of round. So yeah. we scrapped a bunch of parts and it was a learning curve. <laughs> so now we leave stock on here for the final operation. And, I see a and very familiar machine over here. I got the same one. Oh yeah, this is a, uh, this is a favorite right here actually. The uh, VF2 uh, Super Speed, extremely fast machine. We run like small production parts on here. Uh, this would be, um, this is a very small part that we do. We put a, a 60 thousandths hole in here and then at, I've got another operation for a wire EDM. I have to cut a rectangle in that part and ah. the rectangle is plus or minus two tenths, the location and size. And uh, that, that wire actually feeds to that little hole and we make uh, about 120 a month of those. But yeah, all this is just uh, good equipment and these are some actual parts we just ran on these right here. These are getting ready to get cleaned up. Uh, a lot of hole features in here and uh, going to, uh, going to uh, hard code anodize. Hard code anodize for those. Yep. Yep. You guys don't do that in house, that's nope. sent That's all As with outside. Shops. Yep. Now you got two more of these things yep. here. Yep. You are a high yep. end showroom at this point. Well, we, uh, we did transition over. I can see why. Yep. They're, uh, like I said, when we were walking in here, I've never really heard of them. But one thing that's really interesting, you were saying I'd be impressed by the chip augers on these things. And yep. I'm not gonna lie, I am. Yeah. So what happens on these right here, if you look at the interior design, first of all, look at the size of the spindle. The, oh, spindle, the spindle is huge and it's short and it's stubby. That right there by itself versus a smaller you know, spindle like on a Haas, not necessarily saying they're bad, but that right there, the rigidity on these are just amazing. You get zero chatter. Uh, they're, they're so fast. I think they're like 1,500 inches a minute maybe. They're, they're oh, extremely fast. Wow. Yeah, they're very, very fast. And the, uh, the chip escapement and the way the interior design is, um, it, uh, it allows those chips to flow down and it's got a wash that goes around and it cleans this thing out. You hardly ever have to wash it down. Now, when they see these stickers on the machines, when you're talking about having some tools already set up, do you keep these tools in the and machines every, all the time? Every machine, yeah. That's a really so, handy thing when you yeah, can do Yeah, so it. what we do is we have like tool one, half inch, two, three eighths, three, five sixteenths and so on. And so when you're in there programming, we actually can refer to that here and in there. It's on the programming. Is that way everything's conducive, and you, you don't have to think about it. Take a program, put it in a machine, save yeah. seven to set up, touch off, and all that stuff. Oh, you guys have lathes here too. Yep. So we've now, gone. Uh, we've these got, I have been looking at, and I'm very interested to hear your opinions on this. What do you think of this Doosan? Love it. Love it. Love the Doosan. So, what's the uh, what's the spindle bore size on this? Uh, it's three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Yeah. Oh wow. I would have thought it would have been two. So we ended up just doing these parts right here. Oh wow! This is a uh, C22 Hastelloy, and that's uh, Hastelloy. Yeah, this is Hastelloy. Can I touch this? <coughs> sure. Oh my god! For those of you guys who don't know, Hastelloy is a very, very difficult to machine. It's considered a super alloy. It is a super alloy. High that's temp, exactly right. high that's wear right. resistance. Yeah. What would be the rough application of a part like this? This part right here is actually going to go into a pharmaceutical uh, uh, location. Okay, I can't so, yeah. say who. Nope, for sure. You know, but it's, that's that's the application it's going into. Uh, we're going to finish this up. This internal groove right here that he put in here, and then we've got to put some uh, just bolt holes on here, and she's out the door. Now, the scary part about this is the tolerancing on this internal bore extremely tight, and the scary part is is you're looking at ten thousand dollars worth of material right there. Ooh. So if you scrap one of those parts right there, then you know what kind of a day that's going to be. Oh. Yep. That's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a bad day. Yeah. I, uh, I was talking to someone earlier and, you know, they are saying, why don't you like doing super, super alloys? That's, That's exactly why. the reason. Yeah. You do them when you have to, but that is a very, very impressive part. Well, we, we've gotten to where we're very comfortable with them. We've done enough of these now that we take a lot of, we have secondary, third precautionaries in, in our turning and uh, also in our milling as well. Uh, now I see the same brand has a lathe. Yeah. 
the What's Hyundai, the story uh, with this? We replaced an old Morisiki and this, uh, this Hyundai as well. And I would honestly, if you look at the design and everything, I would find it very comparable to the Doosan. It looks it, very it, similar. It's very comparable. And as a matter of fact, it's powered by the same engine right here. It's the same type of control. So they both share the same platform as far as programmability. And I felt like if I could unify the programmability, it would make it easy for, you know, you could train one guy, well, he can run multiple machines now. Do you guys tend to run <coughs> cells like that? So one guy will be running both machines? We do. The, this gentleman that runs this over here, he does a great job. We have a production line of parts. We kind of run those over here primarily. And that right there is for our larger volume. We can swing about, we swung about 20 inches in this part right Jeez. here. Jeez. So, you know, that's you gotta get part for that. You gotta get creative with the jaw because it is a 12 inch chunk. Yes. But we gotta get creative with the jaw holding but we've done 20 inch parts I still here. can't believe you got a 12 inch on there because that's the one I have on my SC28, which is a four inch pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, you, al you almost got your tool arm with that. Yeah, well, <laughs> the pro we arm. gotta get creative, right? <laughs> so that's what you gotta do. This is one of our latest purchases Ooh. right here. We had an old Nico, which is a Japanese type machine. Uh, and I've always wanted a Nakamoto. Um, we ended up buying a 1632 grinder. It's fully programmable. Uh, it, it, it's fully automatic. You can. You can Whoa. come over here, you can write a program for it, you can tell it to take 10 thousandths, you can tell it to take two tenths at a time until you get to four thousandths, go up, automatic dress, it knows how much it takes off the automatic wheel. Automatic dress. Uh. Takes off the wheel, it knows how much it took off, it comes back down, repicks up the part, continues to grind, it'll go up and grind itself, come down, it can do two finishes, three finishes, whatever you program it with. So this is their latest, uh, latest machine uh, that they put out and it's going to supposed to be one of the hottest sellers. Now, it looks like you could, and it looks like you do for oversized parts. You're doing half of it, well, flipping it around, then doing the other half? Well, this part's, uh, this part's uh, as a, as a tricky part. This is a shearing die part. If you look right here, we have, a, I think, about 120,000 shim up here. Oh, and yeah. this part is actually crowned like this. So it's two millimeters difference from quadrant to this quadrant. So oh. it's two millimeters shorter here and here. And the reason for that is, as this is actually going to be mounted to a ram and it's actually going to punch out material so there's going to be a first two points of contact instead of having the whole face contact you got two points of contact and it'll shear its way through the metal and i got a question for you how do you turn that around to pick it up and have it be square we're locating on two dowel, two dowel holes and locating oh. against the vice right there so we know that we can get these two on this quarter yep. and this is equally spaced here on that two and we can rotate it around that's, and that's uh, how we we'll do it and brilliant. the advantage there is the part sitting like like this so we've got this flat and the the tilt is on the, the downside right here by the shimming right there yep so we indicated that zero right there and now we're just taking it down to us now reestablish an outer sharper edge right there at the pressing you guys kind of know what you're doing, don't you? We do. We've My been goodness. doing it for a long time. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think I got amazing. 35 years in this place, yeah. man. Yeah. So, you know? yeah. And so uh, this right here is uh, one of our latest. This ah. is actually our latest machine. We had an old 94 track machine. And this one right here is uh, it's full three axis. Apparently, you can program like G-code, yeah. but you can also program strictly conversationally. You can. And this one right here, we had it equipped with a DXF uh, translator. So I can, take, I can take customer supplied DXF prints, he can put them on a disc, uh, put them in, and he can program directly right from Right at the controller, right? Yeah, right That's at the awesome. controller. So he does that right at the controller. He's doing things he never could do before, and it's almost automated. So he's able to like, I think he's circle milling now. Yep. He can thread mill. This thing has a, uh, a graphics, uh, like if you're doing text and graphics, yeah, yeah. he can punch those things in faster than we can program and stick it on the CNC. You say you can thread mill with this? Yes, he can thread mill with That's it. A, I didn't know they could do that. Yeah. That's fairly impressive. So you impressive. can thread mill, you can helical mill, you can pocket mill, you can rest machine with it. You know what that is? Yeah. So That's a nice machine. It is. It's, really, it's been really nice. And, and so that's our manual machines right there. This is our last department that we're going to probably be updating. You know, uh, we do a lot of polishing and, and kind of finishing on parts, and that's really the primary use of this part. But we are going to get one larger lathe and just have one lathe. And I'm going to set these lathes over here, and we're putting a brand new kit and mirror here. Uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's on the table next. And that'll, that'll be probably real nice. be fourth quarter of this year. So now we got our largest machine, the largest capacity machine in the house, and that's our VF6. Uh, it's got a 3264 table That's and uh, 25 and Z, and uh, it is a super speed. So for its size, it's a it's a very 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 nice machine. Um, the reason that I bought this machine is so we could do 
I kept having to do a lot of large plate work. Yep. And how many times if somebody were bringing you a large plate and you'd have to do half of it yep. and figure out a way to get the other half. Open the door. Make, yeah, and then make it look like it never was too, done in two it's operations. Yep. Oh, this place keeps going. Yep. Holy. So we have uh, some inspection equipment here. We actually, oh, very nice. Yeah, we actually bought into uh, this Keyence uh, system right here. So what it is is augmented reality. So you can basically, let's say you set up a tool, you set up a part in here and you lock it in and you can train, you can write a program with it. And so for the individual that was checking with it, they would take this probe right here and let's say they would, uh, it might be just somebody that's new to, you know, your, your operation. You could be hiring a, a temporary or whatever. And you could hit start and it would show you to touch here and you would just put the probe where it says to touch. You uh, see it moving right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you would touch here, touch here, touch here, touch here. And the value is, is it's as accurate as a bridge style CMM. But you don't have to have a bridge style CMM. That's right. <laughs> and this right here, we usually take it out on the floor. So we can roll it really? out to the floor to any shop position and you can set up a program and it, all the data, you can keep the data in there. You can set up your fields to where it'll show you Green is good, red is out of tolerance, and it keeps all the data so at the end of the day, you can mark the parts part in one through 100, and you can print it out, and you can give the customer full printed documentation that their parts have been checked and all their features are there. This is very exciting to me. <laughs> so basically when we bought the building, it was three buildings in one. So what we did is we transitioned this into uh, uh, a programming room, and I knocked out the wall right there. You can see where we did that. Yep. And so basically, we run SurfCam here. I don't do what, what yep, do you run? I know SurfCam, uh, MasterCam. Oh. This is SurfCam for the lathe right here. And, and this, this is three, Yeah, the, the lathes don't seem, a lot of these guys do a lot of programming at lathe. Finger I used, cam, to, I used uh, to write all mine at the lathe, and I, 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 I'll tell people I can outdo you on the lathe. Some right. people can. I got that GK down, I am down, not that man. good. Some people are great at it. <laughs> and we'll go into the uh, material handling, uh, shipping receiving, Oh, nice. So basically, all the materials, they, they come in through this door, and they'll come in uh, from the, the supplier, and then they'll get matched up with the job routers, and he'll mark the job numbers on there, and they'll be allocated for turning or milling or wherever they need to go. And then, and then he'll check everything in and make sure everything's said and done. So, and is that yeah. the same guy who's running this beast? Yes, yes. This is a nice well, machine. Well, the Cozen was here for a reason. When we first started the business, I bought used everything just to get started. We had a, uh, 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 an old saw, and the saw began to be a problem. We'd have like some four inch round aluminum stock, and it's supposed to cut it three inches long. Well, he'd cut it three, three and an eighth, three and a quarter. So if you're ramming up to 2,000 RPMs and you're feeding Boom. down, the parts coming out of the chuck, we've had multiple crashes, and I said, enough's enough. Ugh. So we called Cozen, and Cozen set it up with this nice automatic saw. This thing cuts within, I don't know, five to 10 thousandths. Really? Very square. Wow. It, 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 you, can, you can tell it, you can write a program. If you have a 12 foot bar, I need three, uh, three inch pieces. It'll take it, it'll take the jaw, pull out three inches, get everything cut and just continue to self cut. Self-feeding, yep. self and, and does everything automatically. That's a beautiful machine. Yeah, it's got a few years on it right now, but I'll tell you what, it has stood the test of time. Honestly, it will probably outlive us all if I know anything about this, sauce. This <laughs> thing right here is quite amazing. I would buy another one at any time, at any day. That's and then cute. basically what we've got here, we, we keep a house stock. These are all the jobs we have. You know, I'm not saying it's the most organized, but we-, we It's we a can, job shop. Mine it's a job shop. We can, we can get through it. We got all of our plastics here. Uh, we have uh, all of our carbons, our 4140s, all of our aluminums. That's all of our D2A2 S7 tool steels. And we have some residual aluminum bar stock uh, just sporadically placed. So, you know, this, this, this feels like home here to me. I have the exact same shelf. This is, this is, <laughs> home. Same. This is home for me. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a GF uh, Charmise uh, wire. I've had it for about six years now. Phenomenal machine. What's your, what's your work envelope on there? Uh, 14 by 10 by 10. That's a pretty big machine. So these are the parts that I'm cutting right now. I'll tell you, uh, I'll be blast these in a bit, but uh, as you can see, the contour right here, I actually have the mating piece over here. Um, D2? Uh, that is D2, and it's hardened 60 Rockwell. And so I, I harden it first, and then I'll come and do the finished cut, and uh, that way you assure the tolerance and every, nothing moves. It is the best. So the last thing I can show you here. Hardage! This piece of equipment right here, you know how valuable they are. You can hold tolerances like nobody's business. Uh, okay. What, what so, is this? Well, it's a collet lathe. Have you ever never seen one? Not oh, like this. 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 Is, this is this is amazing. No. This machine is amazing. So, I would say that the tolerance that you can hold this machine 
unbeatable. And the beauty of it is it comes with these pallets right here for just about every size. Oh. And when I bought this machine, I opened that drawer up and everything was already there. And if you look on the marketplace, these things run from fifty to forty thousand oh, yeah. dollars. And uh, I got a phone call and the guy said, I've got a lathe, I'll sell you for twenty five hundred. No problem. And I said, I'll take it. See, I've run a collet chuck on my CNC lathe, but I've never seen one like this that's a manual collet lathe. This is a fun machine to run, very quiet, very smooth, and very accurate. You know what's very funny too? We've been to a lot of shops over the years, some places where they're running gear equipment from the 60s. Yep. You could drop this in the middle of there and you'd have you'd have to pick it out. Yeah, yeah. These things don't change because they work. That's right. They don't change. They do what it's you want it to do. It's been the same design for probably 50 years. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Totally. That's super cool. I love yep. that. So it's been a good machine. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for showing us around, Ron. You're much appreciated. Yeah. Where, if people want to find out more about your company, can they find out? Uh, if you look on www.dynatech.com, you can find us on the web. Or you can call us here at 5639 Cannon Drive in Monroe, North Carolina. Make sure you guys check this one out. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much to everybody here at Dynatech for having us today. Getting to check out shops that are similar to my own is one of the coolest things I think we get to do because you can see very practical next steps of machines or capabilities you can add. Uh, I find it very, or very useful and I hope you guys do too. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.